Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a recent reads wrap up and an upcoming TBR because I have now finished about five books since we last talked and if you didn't see my last monthly wrap up I am changing how I do wrap ups moving forward on the channel where every time I finish four to five books I'll come on here chat about them with you and then talk about the next four to five books that I'm planning on reading. So let's get right into it. I am going to go once again in the order of my enjoyment so starting from the book I like the least working our way up to the book I like the most and the book that I actually ended up DNFing uh, was Arm of the Sphinx by Josiah Bancroft. I did get about 100 pages into this book and I was meh, a little so-so on Sunlit Ascents. There were some things I really liked about it and then some things I didn't love about it. And mainly it was just like the plot of the story and the world itself just wasn't my favorite to read about. So I had read this book as a part of my Patreon book club and we had an amazing live show for Sunlin Ascends and had all these great theories and got each other really excited to continue on in the series and originally I wasn't planning on continuing on but after talking with them about it and wanting to buddy read it with them I decided to continue on. Unfortunately it, it seems like this series isn't going to improve on the things that I didn't love about it from book one. It still has the same world, the plot itself is just not my favorite. So for that reason I'm just not excited to read this series and I think that our theories and the things that we were excited about in our Patreon live show, I think those things are going to take a really long time to finally get to and I just don't know if I want to read this four book series to finally get that payoff. Maybe that's coming at the end. There's no guarantee that it'll even have any payoff. So I think that I'm just going to accept that this series isn't for me. It's not my favorite. Uh, I do plan on potentially giving Josiah Bancroft another try in the future with his newest release, The Hexologist, depending on how the reviews are for that one. So I'm not totally writing off this author, but this particular one, it just didn't have the plot or the world that really was for me. Moving on to the books that I did finish though, starting with, oh my gosh, all of, the, all of these are four starts or above, so it's kind of hard to choose my least favorite of the ones that I finished because I really enjoyed all of these. But I will start with, I guess, my least favorite of the ones that I finished, um, but I still really liked it. The Three Body Problem by Shishin Lu. So this is one that I bought, oh man, several years ago at this point, a really long time ago. So it's been sitting on my shelf for a while. And I finally had an excuse to pick it up because this was my patron's pick for my book this month that I was going to read. If you didn't know, the top tier of patrons on my Patreon get to select a book and I will choose at random one of their books to read for the month. And this was the one that got chosen. So I finally had an excuse to get to it. The book itself, bizarre, so, so bizarre. Oh my goodness. Um, this is an adult sci-fi series and it is a trilogy and it is, an alien story. So if you don't love alien stories, don't pick this one up. But the way this one unfolds is so strange. <laughs> and I don't want to say too much because I really didn't know anything uh, going into this book about what the actual plot of the book was. I knew it was going to have aliens and a lot of people had said it was a very dense sci-fi, like very hard scientific concepts, uh, quite complex. And I will agree that a lot of the concepts in this book are very complex. I mean, to be honest, I probably understood about 30% of it. <laughs> it was like a lot of it just went right over my head. So if that's not something you love, this one may not be for you. However, what I will say is even though these sci-fi concepts are very complex, it, it's written in a very, very readable way where it's still very easy to keep turning the pages. You're still very engaged with what's going on, even if at times there are some of these paragraphs of scientific descriptions that you may or may not understand. As for the plot of the book and the overall concepts, I can see why, if I continue on in this series, why people would say it's mind-blowing, because the themes explored are something I think all of humanity can really relate to. Like, I think it's something that we as humans just 
can see ourselves in and, and understand these struggles that our characters are going through and, and having to make some pretty big decisions. There's a lot of like philosophical questions brought up and I think it's really interesting to see humanity through a different being's perspective <laughs> in this way. Now I'm very curious to see where it does go. I'm very intrigued and I really did enjoy my time even though I understood probably like 30% of the book. It does also have a video game aspect to it. So if you are a video gamer, you might like that part of the book. For me, this was just very, very bizarre, but in a good way. And the ending and where things are headed has me very, very intrigued. So that is The Three Body Problem. Very curious to continue on and I ended up giving this book four stars. The next book I will go ahead and talk about is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I finally got around to reading this. I started this book a couple years ago and then put it down for some reason and just never picked it back up. I don't know why. I have no answers as to why, but I finally picked it up again and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this is one, I know it's one of Sanderson's very first works, it's his first published work, so I can see how he's matured quite a bit as an author, but I still found it really fun and still had, it still had really, really great characters. I, I really liked the characters in this book. I will say the middle portion of this book dragged quite a bit for me, where it felt like our characters weren't really moving. They were kind of at standstills all at the same time. So it kind of like the, the momentum of the plot just like kind of halted for a while in this book. But the beginning and the ending really sold it for me. And I really, really liked the, the concepts and the idea that you have this city that used to be this all powerful, glorious capital city. And all of the magic that made it so glorious was one day just stripped away very mysteriously. And so that mystery really had me turning the pages, wanting to know what in the world happened to these Elantrians that used to be these magical, wonderful beings. And then it also has this really interesting magic system. Of course, it's Sanderson, so it's going to have an interesting magic system. I will say this is probably my least favorite Sanderson magic system but it's still a good one. Uh, it's The concept is you draw symbols in the sky and they light up and do certain things. So I wouldn't say it was like the most imaginative groundbreaking magic, but it was quite interesting to see it applied in different ways. Uh, the limits of the magic really aren't explained too, too much because our characters in this book are very much learning the magic alongside you as the reader. So you don't really know all the exact mechanics of the magic and, and how far it can really go and all the different things it can do. So if that would bother you, just know that. Um, but I really liked the characters at the end of the day and I really liked the mystery aspect of this one. And I feel like as a Cosmere fan, I eventually had to read Elantris because I think that I'm now, if I go back and reread some of the books in the Cosmere, I bet I would pick up on a lot more hints of Elantris in other books. So I feel like this is a pretty core Cosmere novel that I just had to get to and I enjoyed my time with it. The next book I have, the next two books are five stars each, so it was a really good uh, wrap up here that I had. Uh, the next book I have is Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. This is one that I listened to on audiobook, which was a fantastic audiobook. I highly recommend it. This follows two timelines, one of which is in the present where you're following a girl who was in jail and has been brought out of jail to basically help restore this old painting that this town had commissioned from an artist for their post office. So she is brought in as someone who is supposed to restore this painting back to its original beauty and she has no idea why. She has never done any sort of art restoration before so she's very confused as to why she was the one selected for this opportunity but she's not going to turn it down because it's getting her out of jail. Now the past timeline is actually following the original artist of that big wall mural in the post office and the mural itself has a lot of really weird stuff in it that you find out in the present day timeline that's like why did the artist add these things to this 
painting. This is very bizarre. So you're kind of trying to figure out like what went wrong with this artist, what happened in her life to lead her to creating this particular painting and adding all these things in it. And so it's very much a mystery where our present day timeline is trying to figure out what happened to the character in the past. And I loved this. I was so surprised because I didn't know anything about this going in. I had read one previous book from Diane Chamberlain, The Dream Daughter, which I absolutely loved. And I didn't know anything about the plot. And if you had told me what the plot was, I would have been like, no thanks, that does not sound super compelling, but I was so intrigued. I just could not stop listening to this book. It was so good, and the way the mystery plays out, there are some pretty heavy things that happen in this book. Please, please check content warnings. There is a pretty descriptive scene of something that happens, so just be prepared going into this. This is, it gets quite heavy um, through some of the themes and stuff that it explores and some of the stuff that the characters have to go through is quite intense. So just know that. But uh, the actual like mystery of the novel and the dual timeline execution, I just loved it. I loved it. And I really, really cared about the characters. I really found myself very much rooting for these characters and understanding all of their different decisions. It was just really well done. So I I loved this. It's not like an all-time favorite, but I think Diane Chamberlain might become an autobi author if I read another book like this from her because The Dream Daughter was amazing and now this one is amazing. She's gotten two five stars from me, so I'm gonna have to keep reading Diane Chamberlain. If you've read this author before and have any recommendations, let me know. But I'm just, I loved this. I loved this mystery novel and I highly recommend. And then finally, the last book I have to talk about is actually in this collection of short stories and novellas. It is The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. And I, again, read this because I was gearing up to read The Lost Metal. And I'd heard that the more Cosmere you've read before you go into The Lost Metal, the better, because The Lost Metal is really starting to bring all the Cosmere together. So that was the reason for so much Sanderson in this recent wrap up and so much Sanderson in general recently because I've been just wanting to read The Lost Metal and I feel like I can't until I've read all this other stuff. So I finally read The Emperor's Soul and I loved it. I mean, I had heard so, so many good things. So many people had said that it's one of Brandon Sanderson's best. It's one of their favorites. I didn't actually have super high expectations going into it because it's a novella and I am just not a huge novella fan. It usually just always leaves me wanting more where I just feel like I never get enough, especially from a fantasy novella. But man, I I don't know why I didn't listen. It, it was amazing and I think the length of it did not hinder my enjoyment at all. I did not finish The Emperor's Soul thinking like, oh my gosh, this should have been longer, I want more. I, like, I do want more, but it's not because it wasn't a complete story, it's because I just really liked the magic and the characters and all of that. Um, so basically The Emperor's Soul, you're following a character who is kind of a, a thief. He's an expert in this magic system, and the magic system behind The Emperor's Soul is that you can essentially go into an object's history and rewrite that history to make that object think it's like something else. So it kind of sounds like the magic in The Founders Trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett right behind me. Uh, it's a little different though. So for example, I could look at a ripped up couch. I could go into that couch's history and make it think that it had never been ripped and instead make it think that it had always been beautiful and perfect and then it will magically become beautiful and perfect. That's the best way I could describe the magic. Uh, so it's a really cool magic system and I really, really liked learning all about the magic. And the way the magic is used for this particular story is a really interesting concept to explore because, I mean, the title kind of tells you the Emperor, uh, he went through some sort of accident and he is basically um, in a comatose state, so no one can heal him. So they commission this artist to come in and essentially make a duplicate of the Emperor's soul that they can then use to bring the Emperor back to life. 
and it was super cool. It, it was just a really cool story and the main character herself, she's someone who's very much has her own interests at heart but at the end of the day also wants to do the right thing and I really, really liked her. And it's all told basically from like one room and it was just so compelling the way it was told, the, the length of it I think really, really helped it because it didn't waste any time. It really only concentrated on the most important things and this actually makes me think that maybe I would enjoy more novellas. So it's kind of opened up my eyes to maybe trying out some more novellas in the future, but I really, really loved it. I thought that the magic was cool, I thought the plot itself was fantastic, and I loved our main character. So now I'm really curious to see where else in the Cosmere this magic could be used because it's quite powerful. And it's not powerful in like a fighting kind of way, it's just powerful in a very like manipulative kind of way. Like you could really do some some interesting things with it. So I finally understand all of the hype for Emperor's Soul and I agree with it. I think it's fantastic. I don't think it's my favorite Sanderson book. Uh, I still think like Stormlight and Warbreaker are my favorites, but it's really, really, really good. I, I loved it. So highly recommend checking it out, The Emperor's Soul, and it does touch on some pretty important Cosmere stuff. So if you're a Cosmere fan, it's, I feel like it's essential reading. So those are all of the books that I've read. Now let's talk about the upcoming books on my TBR that I'm planning on reading. The first is, let's talk about audiobooks because I'm almost done, I'm like halfway done with my audiobook for Christina Lawrence, The True Love Experiment, uh, which was their newest release from this year and I'd been sent this to review, so I have definitely been wanting to prioritize it. So this one is really, really, fun and I definitely will have it finished by my next wrap-up so I'll get to talk to you all about it but essentially take the idea of the the bachelorette our main character she's a bachelorette and she goes on this reality dating show she's the main person on this reality dating show and the catch of the show is that the audience is the one who picks her soulmate um, so it's kind of a fun concept and I really like the main character. I'm having a ton of fun with the story, so I have a feeling I'm gonna really, really enjoy this one, unless it does something horribly wrong in the second half, but so far it's a ton of fun. So I'll have this one definitely for you on my next uh, Recent Reads wrap up. And then after I finish that audiobook, I am planning on picking up The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is a middle grade fantasy that I've heard nothing but the most amazing things about. It actually, it says it won the John Newberry Medal Award, so I know it's just gonna be beautiful. I'm very, very excited for it. I have not heard one bad thing about it. <laughs> so I really, I don't know too much else though. I just kind of picked it up based off of everyone's excitement for it. And then finally, after I finish that audiobook, I am planning on picking up The Diviners by Libba Bray, uh, which is one I've had on my shelves for a while, and I feel like now that it's getting into the fall season, this seems like a perfect time to pick up this series. I do have the entire series on my shelf, so hopefully I like this. Fingers crossed. It is a young adult fantasy, and it is an urban paranormal fantasy that takes place around the 20s, I believe. Uh, so it has like a very cool setting, and I, I've just really heard good things about it. So crossing fingers that I end up enjoying that one and that it's good for the fall season. And then in terms of physical uh, books that I'm planning on reading, uh, I've started The Final Strife by Sarah El Arifi, and this is one that is for my Patreon book club that I'm about 50 pages in, not very far in quite yet, but hopefully we'll have this ready by my patrons live show. Uh, so far, I'm very intrigued by it, and a lot of the chatter in our Discord has mentioned that this is a Adult fantasy, definitely very dark world, but it almost leans a little bit young adult as well. So it's kind of in that middle ground of like new adult, if you will. Uh, so I think this, this sounds like a good crossover between young adult and adult. And I would agree so far with the writing um, as far as where I'm at in the book. I think that this could appeal to young adult fans as well as adult fantasy fans. So I'm excited to keep going and see if I enjoy this. And then I'm also reading The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson. Finally, 
Finally, I feel like this has been on my TBR for so long and I've just kept having to put it off because I have to read all these other books before I get to this one to make sure my experience is as wonderful as it can be. Uh, I am almost halfway through. So, so far I'm really enjoying it and the Cosmere stuff that has just come up is like pretty mind blowing. So I'm glad I've read the other books. We'll say that. I'm glad I've read the other books before I read The Lost Metal. It's really good so far. Very excited to see where it goes. And then finally, the last book on this upcoming TBR is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. Uh, this is the third and final book in the Devabod trilogy, which is definitely one I've been wanting to finish out for a while now. I believe this was on my last TBR and I just have not had a chance yet to physically read this book. It is quite large, so hopefully this one will be done by the time I do another one of these recent reads wrap-ups and I can finally finish out this trilogy. I've been really enjoying it so far. It's not an all-time favorite for me yet, but maybe, maybe the third book could make it an all-time favorite. That would be awesome. I would be all for that. So yes, very excited to finish that one out. So that is the end of this video. <laughs> what is the latest book you finished that you really enjoyed? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!